So I want to share with you a recent update coming directly from Kamala Harris's camp, okay? And this is in regard to her preparation or preparedness or lack thereof for the presidential debate between her and Donald Trump on Tuesday, which would also mark the very first time the two would have ever met, which if this debate follows the same and similar rules as the Biden debate on CNN, then they will not shake hands. They will just both enter in and go directly to their respective podiums or corners. But I think that that would actually have an impact on how the vibe of the debate as this opponent that you're facing this, this, your enemy, in essence, your enemy that you have been more or less clapping back from behind the protection of your keyboard, keyboard warrior, you know, just typing away in your basement there. And now you actually have to come face to face with this threat that, you know, is bigger than you, you know, aggressive, you know, intimidating. He's... He's a lion. He's a beast. He's our warrior president. And you know, you know, without a shadow of a doubt that you don't stand a chance, but you're going to try to fake the funk and put on this show so that maybe just maybe the media spares you and America might believe you and you can keep this game and this charade going on a little bit longer stretch this out, make it through September, possibly pull off an October surprise and see what happens in November. I mean, here we are, September 8th, okay? The debate will go down September 10th in theory, unless by chance somehow it gets canceled or postponed, which I'm not ruling that out, by the way. And from there, there's still a lot of time left between then and election day or even the beginning of early voting for most people. So what do you do in between then? And let's just say the debate doesn't go so well for Kamala Harris. That's going to dictate what should be done in between. You know, and if the debate does go well, which odds are probably won't. But even if it did, if the debate goes well, does that mean you disappear again and you aren't vocal to the press, to the media, to interviews, to the voters, or if the debate doesn't go well, then do you just kind of ball up and roll up and, you know, wave your white flag and begin to lick your wounds and realize there's nothing left we can do besides to, to cheat. So, um, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, some of the things that have been happening here recently don't make a lot of sense and that will probably continue to be the mode of operation for Kamala Harris's campaign strategy. For instance, uh, I don't know if you guys saw this one. I put it up on a community post today and, you know, Kamala Harris has enjoyed stealing Donald Trump's policies and his terms and his phrases and his mannerisms and literally everything about him as she should, really. I mean, because Donald Trump should win. MAGA principle, MAGA ideals, you know, the populist conservative values, the same that have brought over Tulsi Gabbard and the same that have brought over RFK Jr. It just makes sense. It's the party of common sense. So for Kamala Harris to want to be more like the party of common sense, I can't argue with that. However, to, to do a move like this, it's just low. It's just low. I mean, saying that the Harris campaign now blames Trump for a botched Afghanistan withdrawal. I, <laughs> I think the, the only thing worse than that, beyond that, would be her somehow trying to blame Trump for her collard greens not coming out tasting so well because she washed them in a bathtub or she had them on a flight from wherever she flew to wherever she flew, which that story probably never happened. But it's like, how did Trump mess up your collard greens? He wasn't in the kitchen with you. 
How did Trump botch the Afghanistan withdrawal? You did that. But unfortunately, Kamala Harris's biggest uh, handicap besides herself, besides her IQ, besides her her laughter, besides her lack of accomplishment, her uh, ineptitude, ineptness. I don't even know a word to use. I've never had to use that word before to describe somebody. Uh, her biggest handicap, her biggest drawback is the fact that she needs to distance herself from Joe Biden, Joe Biden's policies, Joe Biden's past, Joe Biden's present, and her association with Joe Biden. And that really only puts her closer to Trump. Be that as it may, let's watch this together. Gunther Eagleman shares breaking sources say that Kamala's campaign is freaking out over the coming debate. No shock, no surprise there. Hey guys, I got a lot I want to share with you. We're going to try to run through this pretty quickly. I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. Let's get it started. We know that Vice President Kamala Harris, she is in her hotel in Pittsburgh. They've got the lights as if it's in a studio. They've got the stage. They've even brought in uh, somebody who's dressed and acting like the former president. Breaking, Kamala Harris is allegedly using an actor who acts and dresses like Trump in preparation for the debate, while Trump is having informal policy discussions in preparation. And we talked about this before. We've talked about this a few times on live streams, on previous videos. But I think that this is pretty insane to think that Kamala Harris is going so far to even bring in stunt doubles, Fall Guys. That movie sucked, by the way. Don't watch Fall Guy. It's a terrible movie. Uh, to prepare her for this debate with Donald Trump. I would tell you right now, you could go to Donald Trump, okay? And I'm not saying that this... A debate determines whether or not you are capable of being president or not, because, yeah, anyway. But I'd be willing to bet that Donald Trump, you can say, hey, you've got a debate scheduled tomorrow. And I don't care what day it is. You have a debate that's scheduled tomorrow. And uh, and he'd say, OK. Wouldn't matter who it was with. Wouldn't matter where it was. Wouldn't matter anything. It wouldn't matter who hosted it, what news moderator or proctor or whatever, wouldn't matter. He's ready. He's ready to go. You know, and it's just like when it comes down to your ability to run the country, your ability to make sound decisions, your ability to make America great again, you don't need to prepare for that. You know what needs to be done. You know how to do it. You know what people want, you know what they don't want, you know what history ha has taught us, you know what the future could potentially hold, you, you, you just know. And I think that the key here isn't whether or not your debate performance is up to the standards of America to be entertained or the media to t talk about and create clips for the next day or the next week or whatever. But I think it's more of the fact that you can take in a question and you can produce a sound and solid, reasonable, rational answer that can be substantiated and executed on. And that's one of the things with Kamala is I don't think that she's fully aware of what she can and cannot do and or what she should and should not do, which I think is going to lead to a really, really high level of lies being told by Kamala, maybe not intentionally, just but accidentally, but also maybe her total quantity of lies may actually be pretty low because I don't think that she's going to say a lot. I think she's going to use up her time. I think she's going to speak words will come out of her mouth, but the substance behind that and what in what she says, I don't think there's going to be much there. And I think that usually most of the time it's going to be her repeating the question two or three different ways. And then kind of just re if you've ever heard her speak before, just more of the same. And then we know that the former president himself is just having sort of informal policy discussions from what we understand in preparation for Tuesday. What do both of these candidates need to prove, Pete? Well, Kamala Harris has to prove that she is ready for prime time. 
She's done no solo interviews as the nominee. She does very few unscripted events. And when we do see her in those types of situations throughout the years, she tends to fall flat on her face. So she needs to demonstrate for the American people that she is up to the task of being president of the United States, that she can stand up to the progressive elements of her party that want Israel to just fold to terrorists, and that she could stand up to adversaries like China and Iran and Russia all across this world. That's what she needs to prove. I think Kamala has a lot to prove, and I think that she has, um, she probably has a lot of weight on her shoulders. There, is, there are high expectations from the standpoint of you know, her being placed in this position by Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama and Chuck Schumer. Hakeem Jenkins or whoever, there's a lot of pressure here because it's like, look, Joe was not going to be able to pull this off. You have to. You have to. You have no other choice. There's no other option here. And so she's going into this with, um, you know, she's she's going into this as an underdog for sure. But uh, she doesn't have the skill and she doesn't have, in my opinion, the intelligence and the history and the track record and anything of respectable qualities that would allow her and provide any form of confidence that she can succeed in this debate. Breaking Trump has a whopping 27.8% lead over Harris in Nate Silver's updated Electoral College prediction poll. That's epic, okay? That is a huge spread. And so that's also going to be in the back of her mind, realizing that ever since the DNC, she has been tanking, dropping in the polls. And depending on what happens on Tuesday or even better yet, what doesn't happen on Tuesday, she's she's got a lot of ground to make up. She's got to stop the bleeding uh, and begin to turn this ship around. Otherwise, it's guaranteed loss. Uh, it's a guaranteed loss. And this could lead to a Donald Trump, J.D. Vance landslide victory, a huge upset. I mean, it would be of epic proportion and. You know, there'll be, you know, probably be a little bit of gloating there when it's all said and done, but rightfully so and definitely earned, definitely earned breaking sources say that Kamala's campaign is freaking out over the coming debate. They have Kamala held up in a hotel room with studio lighting, a stage and even someone who's impersonating Trump. They know she falls flat on her face at debates and are looking for any excuse to get her out of it. Yeah. So, you know, historically, the debate, the final nail in the coffin, you know, the haymaker that Tulsi Gabbard put on her uh, is definitely going to be, you know, Kamala doesn't want to experience that again. You know, you know, and it's funny because it's like everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face or they get punched in the mouth. And she got sought pretty good, but she's about to go up against a heavyweight that she has never, ever had you know, I mean, Tulsi's good, but she's about to go up against the top dog. OK, big dog. OK, she's about to go up against 34 time convicted felon like he like, come on, come at me, bro. Well, look, we're, all jokes aside, we are taking this extremely seriously. Uh, Donald Trump is a skilled debater. Uh, he has been in the most presidential debates of any candidate in presidential history. Uh, this will be the vice president's first uh, presidential debate as the nominee. Uh, and so, you know, we know that Donald Trump is preparing as he has been for weeks. Um, and so he's going to come ready. Well, look, we're, all jokes aside, we are taking this extremely seriously. Oh, yeah. All jokes aside, Donald Trump's coming ready. Preparing? Sure, maybe. You know, um, it's funny how they continue to introduce these new people, these new aides, these interns. There's such high turnover in Kamala Harris's, uh, her staff, her, her, her campaign. You're never going to see the same face more than once, more than twice, probably. And I think one of the, you know, two big takeaways here is number one, to, you know, all things, all jokes aside, just being serious. 
it's crazy how that needs to be said because Kamala Harris is rarely serious. She's rarely taken seriously because she's always laughing and giggling and cackling and such and so forth. So that's that just needs to be said. And I don't think that that's a, a, a strong characteristic trait that a president should have, especially when going up against, you know, some very fierce world leaders around the globe. Number two. Number two, then some folks that ain't too happy with us right now, okay? Especially knowing uh, that you are, you are one half of the Biden administration that made them unhappy with us, okay? All right, so I'm just saying, you got a lot, of, you got a lot, of, you got a cart in front of the horse, man. <laughs> you got your work cut out for you. Number two is this is her first presidential debate. Question is, will it be her last? Will it be her last? Now, I've brought this up before from the standpoint of, if Kamala Harris loses, all right, let's just back it up a little bit. Donald Trump, he didn't win in 2020, which he really should have. And odds are he probably did, but he wasn't declared the winner. You guys know exactly what I mean by that. But in 2024, he's back at it again. OK, so if Kamala Harris loses and does she come back in 2028? Odds are probably not because no one would get behind that ticket. No one would endorse that. No one would donate to that period. OK, unless she did some serious work over the next four years to become better prepared. And maybe just maybe she tries to come back as a Republican, maybe. And, you know, do what she's been, been known to do best, which is flip flop, denounce her past and pretend, pretend like these things didn't happen. Tell you her values haven't changed and go towards what people want, because evidently she's never been what people have wanted. I mean, even Willie Brown didn't want her. He tossed her to the side. But either way, I digress. Will this be her last this year? Because in essence, she could have another debate. I'm sure if Kamala wanted to set up another debate with Donald Trump, he would be willing and able to do it. He would he would be delighted, you know, uh, no matter what. And it's like, OK, well, if she bombs, should she do another debate and try to recover? And if she excels, should she do another debate to show everybody it wasn't a fluke? I don't know. Described Vice President Kamala Harris as a progressive. She has previously supported Medicare for all. Now uh, she does not. She's previously supported a ban on fracking. Now she does not. These, Senator, are ideas that you have campaigned on. Do you think that she is abandoning her progressive ideals? No, I don't think she's abandoning her ideals. I think she's trying to be pragmatic and doing what she thinks is right in order to win the election. So I think Bernie just said the quiet part out loud. And in essence, that's what Kamala Harris has been doing. We've been discussing that pretty much this entire video. And she doesn't really have her own true core values and principles and policies to stand on. So instead, she's only doing what she thinks people want to win. But that that I think that that is actually being conveyed really well and really clearly now. And folks are not looking. They're not interested in buying into a dupe. They don't want to get scammed. They don't want to get got. They don't want to get burned. And they know that that's essentially what Kamala Harris is offering them, because a lot of things that she's saying now or her campaign saying now or her staffers are saying now or her aides and assistants are saying now are the complete and total opposite of what she has been saying all along. So now they're like, oh, you're just telling me what I want to hear. And that's it. So once you become president, then odds are you're probably not going to do anything different than what you've already done. And you're just lying to me. So why would I vote for you? So uh, DC Drano says this video needs to be everywhere. And Bernie Sanders is confirming that Kamala is doing whatever it takes to win the election. Then she'll enact Marxist policies and they're openly telling us their plans. Yeah. God help us. God help us if she wins, folks. Now, this one here, we talked about this yesterday. Laura Luma, she shared this and she says, watch this morning. Fox and Friends carried my exclusive report about Kamala Harris staging her event inside the anti-Republican Penzi's Spices yesterday. She was caught red handed and now everyone knows her campaign is fake and staged. This has made it to national news, folks. And now she's just 
you know, in a downward spiral of damage control, essentially. And that's also going to be weighing on her leading and heading into this debate with Donald Trump. It's like you've been called out by so many. You've been called out even by some of your own constituents, by other Democrats. You've been called out by businesses, business owners, CEOs. You've been called out by former Democrats, independents. You've been called out by so many people for being a fake. And you just continue to try and push this as if no one as if no one is aware of how fake you are yet only you can no you, you don't even you don't even recognize yourself anymore and and that's bad that's really really bad so um but like bernie said she's only going to she's doing she's going to do whatever she needs to do to win and and that's it i mean it doesn't mean that she's going to play fair doesn't mean that she's going to play by the rules doesn't mean that she's going to try to be better or do better she solely just wants to walk away with the w and that's it doesn't matter she cheats doesn't matter she bends the the rules breaks the rules doesn't matter she just wants to win she also needs to defend the indefensible which is the record and policies of the biden harris administration Because the American people are seeing an economy and inflation and immigration policies that are not in their favor. And she's going to have to defend those. Donald Trump is going to, I think, hold her feet to the fire. And she's got to be prepared for those withering attacks. You know, it's going to be really hard to defend herself with a straight face as most of the debate questions in theory to defend will be in direct connection in relation to failed policy and actions not taken her inaction currently as vice president and more than likely technically currently president because Biden he's gone he's two sheets to the wind so uh she's gonna have to be ready to defend that now I saw this post earlier today and it inspired me to respond and repost with a quote and, and it was a strategy. And, and I think it's a, a crazy and an insane way that leftists, you know, maybe, you know, um, leftists, the lefties are losing it. They don't quite comprehend and they don't really go about things the same way and think about it the same way that we would. I would maybe you and I perhaps maybe we're all on the same page. I know I know at least. Almost 6,000 of us are on the same page because there's a lot of you over there on Patreon. So I appreciate y'all coming over and uh, we're we're going at it back and forth every single day. So I think that there's a lot of folks out there. We do see things eye to eye. We are on the same page and working towards, you know, like minded interests, working towards the same goals. But this one here blew me away and it says, I think when Kamala Harris first speaks at Tuesday's debate, she should look directly at the camera and say, tonight, you're going to hear nothing of substance from my opponent, just a rehashing of the same old grievances from his old tired playbook. I'm going to spend my time speaking to you, the American people, and answering questions about the real issues you care about and deserve to have answered with truth, not hyperbole and conjecture. Because it is a president's job to lead the country forward with vision, with substance, and with real plans. I'm here to talk about my plans and a promise for a better future for all Americans. Then she should ignore and dismiss everything he says from that moment on and pretend he's not even there for the rest of the debate. And that just doesn't make any sense. So I reposted it with a quote and I said, well... Basically, ignoring your opponent completely defeats the purpose of a debate. (laughs) And then I just included a screenshot of the definition of a debate. I mean, let's 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 but let's break this down a little bit. okay? tonight, you're going to hear nothing of substance from my opponent, just a rehashing of the same old grievances from his old tired playbook. But I'd be willing to bet that the same grievances that we have today are the same grievances we had a year ago or two or three or four which the Biden-Harris or Harris-Biden administration has done nothing to resolve. So I'm not going to stop airing these grievances because I want something done. I want I want them to be 
I want these wrongs to be right and these and to be corrected. I would like to be able to afford groceries at the very least and not have to worry about migrants and illegal immigrants and wild gangs coming over here and killing us. Um, I'm going to spend my time speaking to you, the American people, and answering questions about the real issues you care about and deserve to have answered with truth. But Kamala, you could have done that all along. This is a debate. If you want to talk to the people, hold a press conference, have an interview, perhaps maybe an interview that wasn't staged and scripted and then edited down to 17 or 18 minutes with the time shared by your VP running mate, only to then be asked questions for which you didn't answer or even at the very or even worst case, you said next question. <laughs> you just didn't answer the question. <laughs> And answering questions about the real issues you care about and deserve to have answered with truth, which that's that's tough, Kamala, because we know you lie a lot. OK, not hyperbole and conjecture, because it is a president's job to lead the country forward with vision, with substance and with real plans. But Kamala, you can't do that. You can't say that because you don't have vision. You don't have substance and you don't have real plans because if you did, you would put them on your campaign website, but you haven't. And in fact, you said that you wouldn't even provide policies until you were elected president. So what is your real plan? When asked about even some minor hints here and there about how you're going to give $25,000 for people to buy homes and when asked how you're going to even pay for it, you can't even give an answer to that. And lastly, I'm here to talk about my plans and a promise for a better future for all Americans. Kamala, if you could in some way, shape or form articulate in words your plan and promise for a better future for all Americans, I'd love to hear it. Because so far, you've provided nothing but word salad, cackling and empty promises <sighs> and lies. Don't forget the lies. We can't forget the lies. Hey, guys, that's all I got for you on this one. Smash the thumbs up if you're still here. If you like this video, if you enjoy this video, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. I'll check you guys out on Patreon. Until next time, you guys take care. Be safe. God bless you and God bless America. Let's make America great again. See you. Bye.